Hey guys, it's True with Guns America, and today we are going to be looking at the brand new Trijicon Red Dots. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please like, subscribe, share with your friends if you enjoy the content, and um, uh, we really, truly appreciate it. So, back to the new, brand new Trijicon Red Dots. There are two versions, and we're going to be kind of giving you the pros and cons of each today, and doing some testing. Uh, we're going to do some kind of serious testing actually is not just shooting it but also seeing how durable they are so first thing up is an enclosed uh, red dot it's called the RCR it stands for ruggedized closed reflex and that's this one right here that is mounted on this brand new Springfield Echelon and I could not be more excited about this optic because I am a huge fan of enclosed optics. So this has, um, this still uses the RMR footprint. On this gun, this is a custom 2011 style uh, pistol. This has the brand new RMR HD. And um, it is also brand new, also a very impressive optic. The first thing that I should probably tell you about this is it's not enclosed which I'm kind of like, meh, you know, um, guys, technology changes. We all upgrade our cell phones every couple of years. We upgrade our computers. Uh, we upgrade our cars. Uh, Trijicon is finally upgrading the RMR. And so this is the newest iteration of that. Couple of options here, depending on how you're gonna use it. One of them may work better than the other one. So here's what's the same on both of these. Both of these are made from 7075 forged T6 aluminum. They're anodized. They both still share the RMR footprint. So you're gonna say, well, how do they do that? And we will talk about that in a minute. But right now, what you need to know is, is if you already have a gun that takes an RMR, either one of these optics, the RCR or the, or the RMR HD will still fit that. Now, the next thing you need to know is that they both now can have the battery changed without having to remove the optic, which is huge. Nothing is worse than having to take your optic off, re-zero it because you had to change the battery. So on the RCR, the battery compartment is on the top. It takes a 2032 battery. On the RMR HD2, the battery compartment is right in here and it takes a 2032 battery. So the battery life is not the same. We'll talk about that later as well. The other thing that is the same is that they are both waterproof tested uh, to 66 feet or about 20 meters. Uh, in addition to that, um, they don't, they're shock tested, vibration tested, drop tested, and they both share that RMR sort of shape, which that shape has been proven to help make uh, these more resistant to dropping and help sort of dissipate energy away from the actual optic. Now, the other thing that's the same is these both now have glass lenses. So one thing that I've noticed immediately is that they are much clearer. You get much less fisheye effect. Uh, you get much less distortion, uh, much less sort of magnification effect. Like, in fact, I don't really see any of that in looking through either one of these optics. I can roll over a target and it stays crisp and clear and doesn't sort of give me that fishbowl rolling uh, round shape that the old RMRs would definitely give you. So I also think that these, and it might just be personal, um, it might be because the, of the glass, but these seem just clearer, uh, cleaner, uh, better, easier to see through. Like I've, if I'm honest with you, the old RMRs seem a little green, a little blue, a little dark, a little bit hard to see through, and they definitely have that sort of magnified rolling effect. So the other thing that's similar and the same is the actual like tracking system or the reticle um, zeroing system has been upgraded. So the clicks on these are one MOA. There is 120 total elevation of MOA in the RMR HD and there's 150 total elevation or uh, adjustment. So let's not call it elevation, let's call it adjustment in the uh, RCR. So that's a lot of adjustment. They both have the option of having a single center dot that is 3.25 MOA, which is a good size. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's easy to pick up. Both of these have a night, have night vision settings, but they both have different levels of brightness. They're not quite the same there. So let's start by talking about battery life really quickly. The RCR, they claim, will do up to six years of battery life on setting number five out of 10. So that's a 12032 battery, which you can also change in the top. Now look, let's never find out if it lasts that long. Change your battery every year. I recommend January 1st. It's a good day to say change your safe batteries as well. 
Uh, the R the RMR HD doesn't last quite as long. I believe that the there's a couple different specs. The owner's manual says something different than the spec sheet, but two years on setting six of 11. So that's kind of interesting. Now, the other um, thing that I want to point out here is that the RCR has a plus and a minus button. It's very simple. You run those up and down. You, there's also a lockout mode where you can lock into the setting that you want, but it's fully manual. You adjust it to what you want it to be. And actually that's personally how I like things. I, I like simple. I don't like having to worry about doing like jump up and down three times and push this four times in order to make a change. So I like the simplicity of the RCR. It is just a plain optic. There's a button on each side. They're tough. They're tactile. You can feel when you're pushing them, but that's how you can adjust things. And if you want it, the setting locked in, you can lock it in. That's about the extent of what you get in this. It's just a single dot um, and the plus up and down buttons on down on one side, up on the other side. Very simple. I love it. Now, the RMR HD, the most up-to-date, craziest stuff that you can imagine. So the first thing I want to point out to you guys is that right here in the front, there is an actual light sensor. And what it is, is it's a forward-facing light sensor. And this is a huge deal because this, in standard operating mode, is set to automatic brightness adjustment. And what this forward-facing light sensor does on this RMR HD is it looks at the target to determine how bright your dot should be. So if you're running a light under your gun, right? And the target is illuminated, but it's dark, it's going to adjust the target based on the illumination on the target so that it turns the brightness up if you're putting a thousand lumens from your flashlight onto the target. That hopefully that makes sense to everybody. The same works the opposite way. Let's say that um, your target is super dark, right? You're looking into a dark corner or some shadows. Well, it's going to turn the brightness of the dot down so that you can see past it in order to be able to uh, shoot effectively and, and cleanly. Um, this RMR HD has multiple program settings. You can also change it to a manual mode, but it also has three settings in this automatic mode. It has the standard setting, and then it has a setting that you can change so that it only adjusts in the high range. So it's only, let's say you know you're gonna be in daylight the whole time. Well, it's never gonna let it get down below a certain dimness level. And then there's also a low setting, which, hey, you know you're in the dark, don't ever let it get up beyond this. So there's the high automatic settings, there's the standard, which is the full range, and then there's the low setting. It sounds a little complicated. I'm going to be honest with you, it is a little complicated, right? Um, and you have to do all kinds of hold this for three seconds, let go, hold this for three seconds, push this button. And for me, that is kind of a deal breaker. That is more than I want to think about when I'm out on the range, when I'm carrying. Um, but it does have a great automatic mode. And so if you're happy with that, just leave it alone or run it in manual and you can still basically get the same stuff that you had before. But for those of you that want more, it has it, okay? It has all that programming stuff that you might uh, have been wishing for. The other thing I'm gonna point out about the RMR HD is it's longer than a traditional RMR. So it comes really close to the back of your ejection port. The owner's manual says if it hangs out over your ejection port that it's a problem. So I actually started to mount it on this Echelon and it sticks out too far over the top of the ejection port. It is not gonna work on this Echelon, so you're gonna wanna check on that. Um, but this RMR HD has a bigger window. It also has an index point up here on the top. And what that allows you to do is actually aim with it in case your battery ever failed, uh, in case you're just doing indexing. I actually tried this and you can shoot pretty darn good just shooting off of this little ridge on the top. This also has a, an additional reticle option and this sounds crazy and this gets back into the programming mode of complicated, but you actually have a 3.25 MOA center dot in here and that's adjustable for brightness. You also have a 55 MOA segmented circle. And there are, if you read the owner's manual, there's specs for how far apart everything is. I mean, I don't know why you would want that in a red dot, but it's there, it's bright, it gives you that circle around it if you want more and you can independently adjust the two. So you can have them so they're both the same. You can have one brighter than the other one. Um, it's pretty wild what you can do, but that's only available in the RMR HD. In the RCR, you just get a plain old dot, which for simple guys like me, that's what I like. Okay, uh, let's talk about the mounting on the RCR. So guys, this is patented, it's unique, it's ingenious. Kudos to Trijicon for coming up with this. It is absolutely insane because, guys, this RCR uses the same exact footprint as the 
old RMR. So if you got a pistol cut for that, this enclosed dot is gonna work. And you go, well, wait, how are you gonna put screws down? Well, here's what Trishicon did. They found out that they can do what is called a capstan screw. And it's a screw with holes in it a whole bunch of them all the way through. And so basically what I did to mount this is I dropped these screws in, I set the optic on top, the Echelon has these adjustable recoil lugs and it's set right down on those and locked in. And then you take a little Allen wrench and you sit and you turn this like, I don't know, a quarter, maybe not even a quarter, a third um, of a turn at a time and you turn these in. And then Trijicon actually has what they call a torque card. And you stick it in here and you put the little Allen wrench in and you bend it so that it is four clicks over. And that is the correct torque of somewhere between 15 and 18 inch pounds of torque to torque this down. So that is really cool because now you have these on here. You don't have to take it off to change the battery. You can torque it on and it doesn't take up any room. There's no weird way to mount this. It doesn't take extra plates. Uh, so I am a huge fan of this. Now let's talk about why uh, you might actually want a enclosed versus an open emitter. So I live in the state of Idaho. It rains here. It snows here. It blows here. We have dust. We have dirt. We actually have sand in certain places. We have lakes. We have beaches. I mean, we have all kinds of conditions and you can get all of those sometimes in the same month. So with an open emitter, you have a little tiny uh, emitter that shoots a laser out onto this glass and reflects it. And um, it's quite possible to completely fill this full of dirt. So if you were to put this gun in a holster and go prone shooting a rifle and you did some belly crawling, it's quite possible that you'd get up and find that this dot right here actually acted like a shovel and just scooped crap up as you crawled along. I've also been in snowstorms before, open carrying an open emitter dot and had this completely packed full of snow and I couldn't get it out, couldn't see through it. So I'm 100% over open emitter dots unless it's for competition. So I 1000% want the closed emitters. That's my personal opinion. I actually want to know what the viewers, those of you watching this, think about this. Please put this in the comments. Are you wanting more open emitter dots or do you think that the future of red dots is closed emitters? So the advantage of the closed emitters you can see here is there is a glass lens back here, a tempered glass lens that is sealed. You can't get water in there. Water runs off of it. You can't get dust in there. You can't get dirt in there. We're gonna test this later. We're gonna dump some shovelfuls of dirt on top of these, shake them out, see how they'll work. We'll wash them in a bucket. We'll drop them in water. We'll just make sure we're gonna, we're gonna beat these up pretty good today. So stand by for that. But uh, make sure you comment and tell us what you think because I, I personally wish manufacturers would quit making these and simply focus on closed emitter red dots. I think they're the future. I think they're what the consumers want, but you guys tell me. So the MSRP on both of these, same exact MSRP, is 849 so that's not street price that's msrp and guys i know that sounds uh, perhaps a little steep but these are american made american designed american manufactured uh, these are the standard for the military and for law enforcement i'm telling you more law enforcement and military have used rmrs than any other optic out there so this is the next iteration it's got more technology in it it's better and it costs more so that is what it is if uh, if you want one and you can't afford it right now go save your pennies don't whine about it american manufacturing is expensive
yet. Okay guys, first up we're gonna throw it clear across the range here. This is gonna be uh, close to 20 yards, 18. Um, this is the RMR HD on a Glock 17. So it's, uh, it's empty, I already checked it, but there you go, you saw it hit. This is the Echelon with the uh, RCR. It has a TLR1 on it, so it's even heavier. And um, we're gonna huck it right over there, so. Oh, the light turned on. <laughs> okay, we got a dot and we got a dot. Everything seems fine. Hey, hard to believe, but even with all that dirt that that emitter just landed in, that red dot, that emitter on the open is still working. Of course, the closed one is. We figured that would happen. Gonna do it one more time, and then uh, gonna do some other things here, so. Well, the Glock won't shoot. The Glock will not fire. So I'm gonna clear that. Trigger's dead. Let's see if the Echelon fires. And I'm gonna go ahead and say it's not going to. The slide won't even close. Well, maybe it will. How about that? The Echelon worked after throwing it into the hill a whole bunch of times and filling it full of dirt. Let me try running the slide on the Glock again and see if it will, if it will run. We still don't have a trigger. Oh, oh, now it went. We're breaking it in. And we got one shot and a malfunction. Okay, well there you have it. Okay guys, uh, we just shoveled, completely covered these in dusty Idaho dirt. And I mean, you can see the dirt falling out of that Glock right there. So this is the RCR, completely enclosed. Uh, I can still see all the way through this. The dot is on. I have no problem visually seeing through this. This, I'm gonna dump the dirt out of this, but you can see it just scoops it up and catches it. And the dot is still on and I can still see it. So there is dirt on the inside and outside of the window, but uh, I could still shoot with this, surprisingly. Like, I thought it would be worse than that and that maybe the emitter hole would get blocked. <sighs> and actually blowing it out actually clears the window up. It didn't even stick. <sighs> and that window cleared up quite well as well. So I don't know what you guys can see there, but both dots are on. You can still see through both of them. Okay, guys, so far we have racked both of these optics on a pallet. We have beat them on the pallet. We actually split the, the wood on the pallet. We've thrown them 20, 30 yards across the pit, uh, pretty much as hard as I could throw them. Uh, we shoveled dirt on top of them. Both of them are still going. You can still see the dot in both of them. Uh, honestly, I'm pretty impressed with this emitter, uh, just the open emitter that it's handled this this well. Uh, we're starting to see bare aluminum. We're about to drop these in. Oh, it's gonna be 14 inches of water probably, and we're gonna just let them sit in there for a minute and see if anything changes. I mean, they have been beat already, so uh, let's see if they'll still hold their, their uh, water guarantee. So here we go. OK, 
Okay guys, these two guns, uh, a Glock 17 with the RMR HD on it and a, a Springfield Echelon with the Trijicon RCR on it have been in the water here for a little over five minutes. We're gonna pull them out and just see if they still function and work. So first, out, uh, first last in was the Glock 17 and we still have a dot and I can surprisingly see through this glass window very well, like no issues whatsoever. It is clean and clear uh, and uh, that's pretty impressive. So let's just go ahead and shoot it and make sure it stays on through recoil. So I'm not gonna stick a full mag through it, but let's just, uh, let's just see what happens here. So, and I feel like that was a malfunction and it was. So the Glock is still not functioning. Um, let me rinse it out with water here one more time. See if it will function now. And we got a stove pipe. So it's completely full of dirt, guys, but here's the good news. Um, the good news is the optic works perfectly. So the Glock does not, the optic does. Uh, I'm sure this the Glock, if we opened it up and um, actually probably just did this with it. I mean, it feels really, really gritty. It's full of crud. Try it one more time. No, it doesn't even want to close all the way. I mean, it shoots, it's just not functioning. All right, so we're going to clear this. And um, we're going to move on to the Echelon and see if that RCR stayed sealed. I'm also curious as to whether my TLR1 light still works. So let's check that out first. So we're clear. And as you can see, my light still works great. These TLR1 lights are phenomenal for the money. Uh, the best thing you can buy. So the dot is still on and it is completely dry inside of the optic. No visible anything. So and actually this feels like it's going to run. So let's, uh, let's check it out and see. Ah, didn't make it all the way. doesn't like my hand loads. There's some hand loads mixed in. I didn't tell you guys, this is a whole batch. If you watch the brass coming out, you're seeing brass and aluminum. So there's some lighter hand loads as well as factory ammo. So that is the Springfield Echelon. Uh, you can see the dirt already drying on the barrel uh, and the Trijicon RCR fully enclosed dot. I can see through it. I can see a dot. It's been in water, it's been in dirt, it's been thrown across the range. Uh, and surprisingly, the TLR1 HL uh, still works after having been submerged. So uh, that is a pretty impressive setup right there, guys. Let's talk about what we did first. I, we zeroed these. I shot them. We shot some, I shot some groups with them, shot some steel with them. And then I went and actually banged them up on the pallet, a wooden pallet. And we also took them and beat them into the pallet. And then we checked zero and they both held zero just fine. No issues with the dots or the guns, either one. Next up, we took them and threw them across the range into the berm. Uh, they were getting into the dirt, hitting hard. There's rocks and stuff in there. So they were getting hucked from pretty far and there is no visible damage to either one of these as far as dents. The, uh, the glass is still fine. They still work perfectly well. Uh, the red dots still work. Uh, after that, we shoveled dirt on top of them and, and, and filled this open emitter completely full of dirt. I thought it would fail there. I didn't think it would work after it had dirt in it, and it still worked just fine. Dot is still on. I could still see through it, especially a quick blow, just a and it would, uh, you could see through the optic fine. The Glock is not a stock Glock. This is an aftermarket top end on it. Yeah, there's had, I'd actually bought it used like this, so I did not have a Glock that would take an RMR, and so that is why this is on here. So don't hold this against Glock that this gun didn't run. It's got big cutouts in it here that let more dirt in, um, but it didn't run. So it didn't work after, uh, after we shoveled dirt on top of it. Um, then next up, we came and dropped them into about, I think there's 12 to 14 inches of water in that bucket on. Uh, dropped them in there, left them in there for more than five minutes. Uh, I've rinsed them off in there a couple times since as well. And um, 
Both of them came out uh, shooting. I mean, you could fire this Glock in emergency. You're still going to get bullets out of it. It just wasn't functioning like cycling properly. You guys, you guys saw the stove pipes. Uh, the, uh, the Springfield um, Echelon, uh, pretty impressive that it still ran, still feels pretty smooth. And the RCR, uh, you can still shoot through it. Emitter still on. Uh, we're good there. The Streamlight TLR. One HL light still worked fine after being hucked clear across the range. It was on the gun while we were hitting it on the two by on the uh, pallet. Um, pretty impressive stuff. This is one of the more expensive red dots that we've seen come to market, especially for a handgun. But here's what I would tell you about this this is American made, American engineered. Um, this is quality stuff. It's got a long standing reputation as one of the toughest and most reliable red dots on the market, which pedigree is important and matters. So uh, here's what I would tell you on this. If you are going overseas, if you are carrying this for a living, if your life absolutely depends on this, being able to take some hard abuse, uh, some hard uh, knocks, um, I don't know that you can go wrong. I mean, you consider what your life is worth. You consider um, all the stupid stuff you waste your money on. Uh, this is kind of updating your technology to the most recent, latest, greatest. And um, I'm not sure that it's overpriced at all based on uh, the quality and the toughness. Now, I want to see Trijicon come out with more of these enclosed optics. I'd love to see them have the light sensor in the front. I'd also love to see them make the programming more simple, easy, and intuitive. If I had one complaint today, it would be that it is difficult, at least for me, to uh, remember what you have to do to do different things inside of the RMR HD. I prefer the simplicity of this RCR. So, guys, those are my thoughts. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Please uh, keep watching, share, like, subscribe, and hit the notifications button for us. We will uh, see you next time here at Guns America. Thank you for watching.